Here we are. Hello, welcome everybody to the next lecture, um, which is about trees and how artificial intelligence might save them. And two persons are here um, who will talk about this. One of them is Markus, Markus Voss. He's an AI expert and intelligence architect at Birds on Mars. And um, he's also active as community lead for buildings and transportation at Climate Change AI. And the other person is Miriam Rigal, and she's a senior product manager at Technology Foundation in Berlin. And what brings them together is the project Q-Trees, and that's the project what um, hopefully will save some trees. Hello? Yes, okay. Yeah, thanks for the introduction and thanks to you all for coming. Um, I, I know you must be hungry, um, so I really appreciate that you uh, stick around to hear our talk. Um, yeah, so Marcus and I um, work together on a project called Q-Trees, um, together with the Greenery Department in Berlin Mitte. Um, the project is funded by uh, Zug. Uh, on behalf of the Federal Ministry for the Environment um, and is also part of the German strategy for adaptation to climate change. Um, now, in a nutshell, what is QTrees all about? Um, it's an intelligent prediction model um, to help optimize the watering of city trees based on AI. And I'm going to tell you in my part of the talk um, a bit more about the why we're doing this and then hand over to Marcus who will explain the how and um, explain to you um, the model that we've developed. So um, Berlin, uh, Berlin, trees have been around um, for more than 300 million years, right? Um, so this is supposedly Berlin's oldest tree, the Dicke Marie, um, that is standing somewhere in, in Tegel and has, uh, is 800 years of age. Um, they've seen a lot, right? Um, they're very resilient plants. Um, they can live up to thousands of years, um, and one could think that um, they, can, they can handle big crises because that's what they've been doing in the past. But something has changed. The climate has changed, and it's not a general claim, it's a problem on our very doorstep. I'm sure you've seen already a similar representation to this. Um, this is actually, actually a chart that is showing the, the changes in temperature in Berlin and Brandenburg um, based on an, on an average reference value between 1971 and 2000. And long story short, um, temperatures are rising. Um, so the, the three hottest years have been recorded in the last uh, four years. Um, and uh, this is, of course, uh, not, not great news. Um, also, the precipitation patterns have changed. So again, we're still in Berlin. Um, here you can see um, the average daily rainfall in millimeters um, between 2015 and 2000. And on the, on the, at a first glance, you might think, well, uh, in recent years, it has rained more, so that surely must be good for the trees, right? Um, but there are some anomalies here. Uh, for example, the drought in 2018, which had a massive impact on trees, um, experts are still seeing today. Uh, so let's zoom in on that year. Um, and here you can maybe see why 2018 was uh, particularly problematic. Um, so in February, uh, you can see that the rain was missing um, at a very crucial point in time um, uh, during growing season for trees in the build-up to spring. Um, and then in July, on the other hand, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, pour down, heavy rainfalls, and it rained 105 millimeters in only two days. Um, the effect of that is that water just drains off the ground um, above the surface, um, and trees can't actually benefit from that. Um, in addition to that, in winter, uh, it, it rained a lot, and, and that's a time, point in time where trees also can't benefit because there's not much water needed. So uh, to sum up, um, we have uh, direct effects of climate change, rising temperatures, changing precipitation patterns that lead to droughts, uh, heat waves, more storms, 
um, and negative effects on the environment. That's not all, unfortunately. Um, so in the urban context, trees are also facing um, very city-specific challenges. Um, I, uh, I took some examples here. This is not um, a full, complete list. Um, just some of the stress factors um, tree, trees are dealing with, right? So for example, you have small tree pits, which means you have a high level of sealing of soil surface, um, prohibiting trees from uh, absorbing uh, the water that is needed. Um, you, has, you have also misuse of these tree pits, for example, by littering, um, soil compaction due to construction sites, um, then there's salt, think about urine, um, road gritting in winter, and then of course, especially in summer, sunlight reflection, right? So for example, um, from skyscrapers around the Europa Platz is a common example. This works like a burning lens and um, causes the trees even to dry out um, uh, further. So um, yeah, uh, here you can see some, some of these effects of these stress factors. On, on the left-hand side, there's a young tree um, that should be blossoming but is already dried out and on the right the quality isn't great but maybe you can figure out that the top leaves are already with it. Um, so of course the greenery departments are already doing as much as they can um, to, to help save our trees and um, they, they do a lot of watering but we asked ourselves isn't there a more efficient way um, to support this, this watering, this water management? Um, and this is basically how the project came about. So QTRIS is all about saving city trees with an intelligent prediction model to optimize these watering activities. Um, so as mentioned at the beginning, um, there are three core um, project partners on this project. Um, so first of all, we have the greenery departments in Berlin Mitte and Neukölln, and these are our um, botanic experts. They have heaps of knowledge on all things water management, tree maintenance, um, green spaces. Um, then there's us, the Technology Foundation Berlin. Um, we have a lot of expertise in running uh, participative uh, digital projects um, because we work at the intersection of, um, of uh, civil society, administration, uh, business and science, um, bringing everybody together and working on solutions that help make Berlin a more sustainable and um, better place to live in. And um, we do the coordination of all the project partners. Um, across this project. And then last but not least, um, Birds on Mars, um, our AI experts. Um, I'm sure Marcus can tell you a bit more about what they do, but it's, uh, it's an agency um, that focuses on how AI um, can, uh, can come up with um, solutions um, that, that help society, that inform um, interesting uh, digital projects. Um, so handing over to Marcus, who can tell us a bit more. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, how we actually do this. And so something that I have to learn as a student, uh, or I didn't learn as a student, I had to learn then as a researcher and a data scientist. So when you're doing actual data projects, if you want to do successful data projects, you're not starting by looking at data and, and coding. And so this is also what we did, didn't do actually in this project. So we, um, before we used any visual code, Jupyter notebooks, whatever, uh, we filled a lot of Miro boards. Uh, I don't know if you know Miro, but this is like a big brainstorming tool. And we did a lot of expert interviews. We did a lot of um, um, brainstormings with experts. We um, asked yeah, the greenery departments, but also external experts. So because, of course, I mean, we all have plants at home and know how to water them, but we are not experts in watering city trees, and we would never claim to say, hey, we can come with AI and solve it just by um, doing that. So that's why we first talked a lot with people, listened a lot to then figure out, okay, what, what could the solution be? And what does the solution look like? So um, like Miriam already said, um, I mean, trees on its own would not need water. 
um, but since we are making it so complicated for them here in the city and, and the climate is changing and some trees that have been plant planted 50 years ago are now not used to this climate, um, they need to be watered. And they actually watered, right? So um, the greenery departments go out and give trees 200 liters, 300 liters of water of each tree. And that's quite a lot of water, and we are thinking now, okay, can this be a little bit more fine-grained? And what you can do is then is also do some physical modeling, because, I mean, you understand the ground, you understand the physics of the tree. Um, this would work in theory, but you're kind of missing this feedback from what's actually going on. And like we said, it's very complex in, in, the, in, in the city, so that that's why we didn't go this route. But instead, we looked at sensors, right? So um, we're using soil sensors. Actually, we're using soil tension sensors, which are... It's a very detailed, but it's, it's basically simulating how a tree, how much water is there for a tree uh, in, in the ground. And here you see Julia, also from the City Lab, uh, looking at, at the sensors that we have there. Um, Loravan sensors, they're sending the data somewhere that we can access them. Um, but of course, we don't want to put sensors everywhere, right? I mean, putting sensors to every tree um, would not be very sustainable. This would be a lot of hardware, uh, so that would not be envir environmentally sustainable, but also not from an economic standpoint. It's just too expensive. So what we want to do is we want to use machine learning to, to learn from all the relevant context information, um, make predictions for all the trees that we don't have sensor data for. So, and so what is the data that we're using there? Um, or, or first have a look at, at the sensor data. This is what it looks like. We are measuring this in three depths. And here you can actually also see that also in this March, it basically didn't rain in Berlin. And this caused the sensor values to go up, which in this case uh, means it's, it's getting drier. And what, what data we're using then to make these sort of predictions, these sort of generalizations to trees that we're not measuring? Of course, weather information. Yeah, soil tension, it's... It's, it's a little bit too technical, we can talk about it. It's, there's actually two types of ways to measuring um, how much water is in the ground, and this is one way. Um, it's a big debate, and it's a little bit off uh, topic for the bigger crowd, I think. Um, yeah, but there's a, it's, it's how dry or, or, or not the soil is. Um, so we're using weather information. Uh, we are using this by one kilometer by one kilometer square, squares from the Deutsche Wetterdienst um, to then also have this information where in Berlin did it rain because, not, of course, not everywhere in Berlin there's the same amount of rain. Um, so this is quite useful. Then we, of course, need to know how much was, were the trees watered. Um, so this is where we have two sources. One is actually from the greenery departments. Um, this is actually the only closed data we're using so far because they're currently only providing it to us and it's also the least structured data, I have to say. Also, I mean, if you work with real world problems, um, this is, I mean, it's Excel sheets and they're not all having the same format and not always the same format. So it's, but it's data. Um, and then we have the data from Giesten Keats. So this is another project by Technologie Stiftung. Uh, some of you may know this project. Um, so this is also where you can go out and if you water trees in your street, you can actually put it in there in this database. And then we also have access to this data for our prediction models. So now we have the watering data, the weather data. Um, what we also use, because we also need to know if the tree is very big or very small, uh, because that also depends um, yeah, how much, um, yeah, how, how fast it's drinking, basically. Um, and so for that, we can use Berlin Open Data. Um, so if you know, uh, Berlin has an open data platform. It's actually not completely on the screen here. Um, but it's daten.berlin.de, so there's a lot of open data from Berlin. It's, the user interfaces are very cumbersome, but, so it's kind of hard to get the data, um, but it's possible and it's there, and it's, it's very cool data. So if we have data for 800,000 trees here in Berlin, um, what type of tree is it, how age is it, and uh, how old is it, and so on. And we can use this for our prediction models. And then we noticed in our, this is actually what we got from the expert interviews, that the shade is a very important factor. So, right, I mean, you may not, not need know this also from your trees at home, uh, plants at home. So if they're in a sh shady place or in a sunny place, they have different water requirements. And this is true also for Berlin. So we calculated a shade index for a whole of Berlin. So I actually sh can show you what it looks like here in front of this building. And you can actually see that the trees that are in front of the building, um, so black means they're not getting they're getting almost none of the sun um, that's available during a day just because of physics, so the sun is going around here. Um, and the trees that are up there are getting a lot of sun. And so this is a very big influence. And so we're calculating the shade inf uh, index and use this also to inform our model. 
Yeah, and this is basically what it then looks like. We put all of this information in a machine learning model, and here we're using random forests, uh, not just for the sake of this meta joke of trees making predictions about trees. Um, no, it's actually a very useful model if you have tabular data. Um, so if you're a machine learning expert, data scientist, you know this. Um, so it's very useful. And then we can make a now cast, um, basically predicting um, those sensor values where we are not measuring them. And then we try to predict it also for the next weeks ahead, which, I mean, the accuracy mostly depends on the weather data that's available. So um, we are evaluating then within this and next year how good this is. Okay, um, so that sums up um, how this model is um, working. Um, I wanted just to share with you some of the lessons learned from this project, which I, as uh, yeah, working with CCAI, also think um, also is applicable in a lot of other contexts. So um, when you want to use machine learning and AI in the context of climate change, um, you have to know that all these projects are really, really interdisciplinary because I've never met a person that's really expert in botany and machine learning or electric engineering and machine learning or, I don't know, biodiversity and machine learning. So these are just too big, like you would have to, a lot of uh, PhDs to, to get this. Uh, so that's why it's really important to collaborate, to, to form teams, to really talk to each other and listen to each other. Um, otherwise, you can't really solve these problems. Um, I've seen a lot of, also in my research uh, career, a lot of work where people just solve the wrong problems. So that's why it's really important to actually do this. Um, and then also, um, I mean, our title is a bit, um, I mean, AI will not save our city trees. Um, there's a lot of other things that will save the trees, but AI can be one part of an overall solution strategy. So this is what, what I at least believe. Um, so you have to realize AI is not going to be the silver bullet that's saving our city trees. Um, yeah. So I'm handing over to Miriam. Yeah. Um that's about it, really. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback, though, um, because as you can see on the slide, we already built something. Um, so on the left is um, uh, some screenshots on fr from our prototype. Um, so the solution being um, a, a web-based um, application for civil society, um, people who are interested in the topics, uh, want to find out more about um, the trees in their neighborhood and uh, and participate. Um, so uh, Marcus and I, after the talk, will be running around and would have a few questions um, for you and would love to show you what we've built so far. Um, and uh, yeah, on the right hand side, it's, it's just a teaser. So that would be um, or will be the second solution um, we're building um, as part of this project, which is an expert dashboard for the greenery department. So again, if you have um, subject knowledge, um, some ideas, input feedback on how such a dashboard could look like, again, to optimize um, the water management um, for um, watering city trees, um, then please come talk to us. Um, and that's about it, really. Um, last but not least, um, City Lab is hiring, Technology Foundation Berlin is hiring, um, just putting it out there. So um, we're currently, for example, looking for um, pro a product owner to join our team um, in our prototyping lab. Um, it's very exciting work. Um, you get to work on a lot of um, exciting projects. Um, so have a look. And I think, Marcus, you're looking for people as well. <laughs> Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, I don't know, it's over or the talking time is over, but we said as it's lunchtime now, if there are any questions like for five minutes, it would be possible to do that. Um, otherwise, I think you are around here. Okay, so thank you very much. Ah, one. There is Sorry. one question there, <laughs> which we could take, I guess. Uh, yeah. Thank you uh, that I can uh, ask a question. Um, as far as I know, it's uh, there's a very sad situation that uh, there are so many trees in Berlin that are ill, right? So um, that's also the reason why you're doing it, I assume. And um, is is it also in your plan to like give the, the decision makers uh, like a 
tr like to give them information about a trade-off, like whether to rather water this tree and not the other, because I mean, what we're facing now is scarcity of money in order to water them. So would that also be a solution to save as many trees as possible? Um, Thank you. So you can uh, add on to that, Marcus. Um, yeah, so I mean, the idea being we're very aware that water will be a problem, uh, the scarcity of water specifically, right? So um, optimizing um, the watering activities of the greenery departments is is that priority. And then, of course, our our hope would be that it's easier for them to um, to to see on that dashboard um, which areas are are in need of water in comparison to others, right? So um, hopefully um, with this model um, and the data we will be visualizing, um, it's easier for the teams they're sending um, to actually take these decisions and make priorities about which trees are in need and, and which aren't. Um, and maybe just to add to that, um, according to damage, that was actually some data I wanted to share in the talk, which of course I forgot, so I need to make that slide. Um, so, based on the Berlin administration, we know that as of last year, um, they have reported that more than half of the inner city trees um, are damaged. Um, so, it's, it's, really, it's really critical um, in terms of damage, but then also uh, dying uh, in general of city trees, right? So, between 2011, 2011 and 2021, um, the city planted 30,000 new trees, but also 60,000 trees were had to be cut down. Um, and this is also not only, but also due to um, drought stress, right? So um, very um, alarming numbers. Yeah, just to also quickly add my five cents, um, it's, so we are not really doing an automated irrigation system right now so in the end it's the human beings that are still scheduling everything and sending out the people so we are just providing them decision support i would say um, what they do in the end with that it, it's something that we also have to discuss next year when we build this dashboard with them together like what's the information that are really really important so we can show that but maybe we can also show some thresholds and right now they're also prioritizing already right so right now they take age mostly so they basically start by the youngest trees and go towards the oldest trees um, and we hope to use something like shading information, for example, to also fine grain this a bit to basically say, hey, maybe take the first ones in the sun, give them a little bit more than the shade, a little bit less. So this is the basic idea of this project. Okay, I think we got one short last question. So I think you already answered it. Uh, the project is not finished, I guess, and you're continuing on it. What are your future plans? Because uh, also in regard to what was said before, it sounds very reasonable to to take this health information into account and stuff. Is this on now? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the project is still running. Um, so as I mentioned just now, we have uh, the the first prototype out for the for the app for the civil society. Um, and then as Marcus mentioned, um, what's up next is the expert dashboard for the greenery departments. Um, so this is why we're here today to um, to gather lots of um, input and feedback um, also from from you. Um, because we're currently working on this and the project will officially run for another year, so September 2023, that's roughly the, the time range. But regarding the technical developments, it will be mostly focused on the sort of forecast for, for this now and the next days. So, I mean, this is because if you ask for money to funding, you first have to do what you promised. Uh, but of course, we also hope, to, I mean, machine learning models can also to help you inform what's the sort of um, aspects for a certain tree that maybe like a certain location, the age, the shading and so on. So we hope also to get some ideas of this long term. Is this a good position for a tree? Is this a good tree for this position? But it's not part of this project, so it will be touched maybe. Um, but yeah, of course, we're also trying to yeah, see if it's possibilities to extend in this project, maybe or follow up on that because we kind of can motivate this, but we, we can't invest a lot of manpower, women power to work on this problem. Yeah. Hey, perfect. Thank you for this um, Bits and Bäume project, which fits really well. 
uh, to this conference. The uh, rest of you enjoy lunch and have a good day.